Committee will come to order. We meet today to consider the United States Taiwan Expedited Double Tax Relief Act. This is a busy day in the Senate, many committees conducting business. So for the information centers and staff, let me explain how I and Ranking Member Crapo will proceed. We're each going to deliver an opening statement. Other members are then welcome to deliver opening statements of up to two minutes. Once opening statements have been given, we'll introduce the panel and allow members to ask questions of the committee staff. After that, we'll consider amendments to the mark. We will then vote on whether to report the mark for the information of members and staff, and we've discussed this with uh, members on both sides. We plan to hold the vote to report the bill around 1045, and we'll let members know if the time for that vote changes. If a quorum for a vote is not present, we will vote when we have a quorum. With that, we will turn to opening statements. <clears throat> Now, the committee is convened today to vote on bipartisan tax legislation, the U.S.-Taiwan Expedited Double Tax Relief Act. This legislation relieves double taxation on investment between the United States and Taiwan. Today's legislation has been developed jointly by myself and Ranking Member Crapo, along with the Ranking Member of the Ways and Means Committee, Chairman Jason Smith, and Ranking Member Neal. For months leading up to today, the four of us have been working closely together to get this done. And I want to thank uh, those three colleagues for their strong support. It is not every day that the bipartisan leadership of both tax writing committees come together in this kind of fashion. But this legislation is hugely important to American workers and national security. Let me highlight the reason why the bill has generated such strong bipartisan support. First and foremost, the momentum behind the proposal comes from the fact that the Senate, on a bipartisan basis, fully supports strengthening America's economic partnership with Taiwan. Taiwan is a critical trading partner. For example, there are deep ties between Oregon and Taiwan developed through decades of trade along the Pacific Rim. My state has understood the importance of supporting Taiwan for a long time. The Senate recently demonstrated its strong support for Taiwan when it unanimously passed the first trade agreement signed under the U.S.-Taiwan Initiative on 21st Century Trade. This legislation is part of a plan to strengthen America for generations to come particularly by supercharging chips making in America. This has been especially important to this committee where we authored on a bipartisan basis the $24 billion in the new chips tax credit to support fab construction here in our country. Taiwan is a critical partner in this venture. Over the last five years, $45 billion were invested in the United States from Taiwan in the semiconductor sector. We anticipate billions of dollars more translating into good paying jobs across the country. To ensure that our country continues to grow these investments in America, relief of double taxation between the United States and Taiwan is a crucial next step. We don't want these investments to fall through or go to other countries because we're not providing double tax relief. This is the same type of double tax relief provided other major trading partners and other countries are providing this relief to Taiwan already. We can't allow double tax issues to hamper any growth in our domestic semiconductor industry, and this is why Senator Crapo and I have felt so strongly about this issue. For U.S. workers who need to occasionally travel abroad, our bill can provide especially strong benefits. Let's say somebody from Portland needs to go to Taipei for three weeks as part of their job training. Right now, they may have to fill out a Taiwanese tax return and deal with all sites, all kinds of U.S. tax filing headaches. Once we get this done, they go to Taiwan for a short business day, do their job, come home, and not worry a bit about it. There's no time to waste. By putting double tax relief directly into the tax code, if things go well, we're talking about months, not years, for the relief for U.S. workers, U.S. investments, and U.S. companies. Not only is Taiwan a critical trading partner, it's a democracy that shares our values and faces a growing threat. The Chinese Communist Party continues its efforts to intimidate and isolate Taiwan through diplomatic and economic coercion and the use of force. China has been ratcheting up its military capabilities along Taiwan's coastline, from updating its military bases near the Taiwan Strait to sending warships and warplanes near the island on a daily basis. These aggressive activities affect the United States and our allies. As a global leader in manufacturing semiconductors, the chips used in TVs and iPhones, but also in advanced weapons and military equipment, 
Taiwan plays a key role in the security of democratic <coughs> nations. I'll put the rest of my remarks on these national security issues uh, into the record. Beijing's activities in the, record, in the region could lead to global disruptions in trade, investment, and finance. As cross-strait tensions increase, the United States Congress has to work to help stabilize uh, the region. Let me close by saying members across this committee have been strong friends of Taiwan, and on this issue, no one has been stronger than Senator Menendez as chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator Menendez and I have been working very closely together on a framework to achieve the goals that I've described here. We've had a long and strong partnership with, uh, with these kinds of issues, working on our committee's shared priorities in the past, and I very much appreciate his leadership on this issue as well. Our unique relationship with Taiwan requires a unique approach to double tax relief as well. It's novel, but more importantly, it's fast. If Congress can get this done, Americans will see more shovels in the ground, more semiconductors coming off the factory line, and more good-paying jobs. I hope everyone on the Finance Committee is going to support this bipartisan and bicameral legislation. With that, I'll turn things over to Senator Crapo. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to your staff also for their efforts as we work to craft a solution for this very unique circumstance we are facing today. Without question, deepening ties with Taiwan and its vibrant democracy is in our nation's best interest. More than 90 percent of the world's most advanced memory chips, used in everything from digital devices to AI, enabled data centers to cutting-edge defense technology are produced in Taiwan. Thus, this committee has a strong interest in ensuring Taiwan remains economically and defensively secure. This summer, the Senate demonstrated support for Taiwan by unanimously passing legislation that I co-led with the chairman, approving the first trade agreement signed under the U.S.-Taiwan Initiative on 21st century trade. Today, we convened to further strengthen the economic partnership between the U.S. and Taiwan by addressing double taxation to encourage cross-border investment. Taiwan is our largest trading partner with whom we do not have an income tax treaty. Normally, Congress enters into a tax treaty with a country to alleviate the double tax burden on cross-border investment. However, Taiwan's unique status precludes it from dealing with double tax issues through a traditional tax treaty. The process we are considering today should not be viewed as a new template to shortcut or end round uh, around tax treaties. Absent this very unique circumstance, the proper path for considering bilateral income tax treaties should be through the Foreign Relations Committee led by Chairman Menendez and Ranking Member Risch, as Senator Wyden has indicated. However, Taiwan's very unique status requires a very unique solution. It requires this committee's expertise to make direct changes to the tax code to deliver treaty-like benefits for American and Taiwanese workers and businesses operating across our borders. These direct changes to the tax code will unlock cross-border investment and provide businesses and workers much needed certainty in four main areas, all of which are in the scope of a traditional tax treaty. First, the bill will significantly reduce withholding taxes on dividends, interest, and royalties paid on cross-border investments. According to a 2020 survey by the American Institute in Taiwan, almost four out of five Taiwanese companies with a U.S. presence consider the current 30 percent dividend withholding tax to be a considerable factor preventing additional U.S. investment. These additional investments are especially crucial in our ability to enhance our onshoring capabilities for advanced manufacturing. Over the past few years, supply chain shortages and surge in demand for computing power have highlighted the critical importance of Taiwan's semiconductor industry to the basic functioning of products we rely on for everyday life. While those additional investments by established chip makers will bolster our economic and national security, those larger companies cannot operate in isolation. They rely on a large network of small and medium-sized suppliers. The second part of the bill, applying permanent establishment rules to create a higher threshold for taxation in the source country, would reduce barriers for smaller and mid-sized Taiwanese companies to conduct certain activities in the U.S., 
fortifying our domestic supply chains. This bill not only encourages business cross-border investment, it also provides relief and certainty for workers. For Taiwanese workers performing services in the U.S., this bill provides they can spend up to half a year in the U.S. before subjecting their wages to U.S. income tax, encouraging those workers to invest more time in U.S. operations. Finally, to provide additional clarity, the bill offers a set of tiebreaker rules to ensure workers who are residents of both the United States and Taiwan are not double taxed on their income. Importantly, all of these items are subject to reciprocity. These benefits are contingent on Taiwan agreeing to provide reciprocal benefits to U.S.-based companies and individuals investing and working in Taiwan. While foreign direct investment from Taiwan into the U.S. has surged over the last few years, Taiwan is also a key destination for U.S. exports. Last month back home, I heard firsthand how Taiwan is a critical ally for Idaho businesses. Taiwan is the second largest export destination for Idaho products, increasing by 16 percent from 2021 to 2022. And 70 percent of those exports involve electrical equipment and machinery. Both in Idaho and throughout our country, our economic and strategic relationship with Taiwan is as important as ever. This bill will help workers and businesses of all sizes get ahead in both the U.S. and Taiwan. Again, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and all of the members of this committee for their hard work and support to strengthen our long-term partnership with Taiwan. I also thank and recognize the staff of the Joint Committee on Taxation for their tireless work. The Finance Committee cannot properly function without JCT's technical expertise. So thank you to Tom Bartold, JCT's Chief of Staff, who is with us today, and to the policy staff at, at JCT who helped all the finance mem members prepare for today's markup. Christine Roth, Jared Herman, Jeff Arbeit, Carol Wang, and Chia Chang, and many others who worked behind the scenes. Your hard work over the past few months is greatly valued and played an indispensable role in making this markup possible. Once the Finance Committee reports this bill, I look forward to continue working with Senators Menendez and Risch and their colleagues on the Foreign Relations Committee on this issue. I'm encouraged by recent progress we've made and confident we'll be able to find an appropriate path forward for each committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Well said, Senator Crapo, and we look forward to working with every member on both sides to get this done quickly. Do other members wish to make opening statements? Senator Cardin. I do. Uh, uh, oh, go, to, go here and then you. Uh, Senator Cardin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me thank you and Senator Crapo uh, for bringing forward this legislation. As you both indicated, Taiwan's unique status requires a little creativity here, and uh, I have the privilege of serving not only on this committee, but also the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. And I supported the efforts in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in regards to moving forward with an agreement, and I support the provisions that are in the chairman's mark uh, that avoids the double taxation. So uh, I hope that we can come together with a holistic approach uh, because it's important uh, that we do the right thing in regards to predictability and tax provisions as it relates to Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan's a vibrant democracy. It's an advanced economy and a major trading partner with the United States. It's a, a, cr a critical partner to my state of Maryland through the Port of Baltimore. It's one of our largest trading partners through the Port of Baltimore. So I think it's critically important that they have the, the predictability of something similar to a tax treaty, recognizing we can't have a tax treaty with the provisions that are included in a legislation that we are considering in the tax code, but also holding open the opportunity of negotiating an agreement. I want to thank you on uh, the specific provisions that are in the chairman's mark as it relates to the reduced uh, tax rates for qualified REIT dividends. 
Um, that's one of the issues that I know that we were concerned about as far as having that clarified. And I thank you for the open manner in which you've handled this. Well, thank you, Senator Cardin. And we're particularly pleased to have this connection between the Foreign Relations Committee and uh, the Finance Committee. It's important for national security. It's important for American competitiveness and jobs. And we appreciate your leadership. Senator Grassley. Uh, thanks to the chairman and ranking member for your hard work and putting together today's bipartisan package. Uh, the U.S.-Taiwan Taxation Relief Act will better align Taiwan and our tax systems to our mutual benefits uh, by tearing down tax barriers to trade and cross-border investments. It will strengthen our economic relationship with the democratic government of uh, Taiwan. It will expand economic opportunities for American and Taiwanese businesses, particularly Taiwanese investment in the United States in areas like microchips. Taiwan is currently our nation's ninth largest trading partner and the 12th largest trading partner with my home state of Iowa. Just last year, Taiwan committed to buy nearly $3 billion of Iowa corn and soybeans. I look forward to the expanded opportunities for economic cooperation with Taiwan that this bill affords Iowa businesses. More importantly, strengthening our ties with our democratic allies in Asia, as this bill does, is exactly the type of steps this committee should take to counter the global ambitions of an increasingly hostile China. I look forward to voting in favor of the U.S.-Taiwan e uh, Expedited Double Taxation Relief Act uh, and hope Congress moves quickly to enact it. Thank you, Senator Grassley. Next in order of appearance would be Senator Tillis. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member, for holding this markup. This is a great step forward in terms of the legislation we're going to vote on today. You know, Taiwan, Taiwan is a vital strategic partner, and we must continue to strengthen our relationship in the face of Chinese Communist Party aggression. We must also continue to support Taiwan through mechanisms like the U.S.-Taiwan Initiative on 21st Century Trade, and I believe a good next step would be to admit Taiwan to the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. Reinforcing our support for our most vulnerable allies in times of conflict show the world that we're always going to support our allies and friends. And China is watching our support for Ukraine right now and any weakness or hes hesitancy, so we must continue to stand firm against Russia, Russia's aggression in Ukraine, just as we should stand firm against Chinese aggression towards Taiwan. There are many policy areas I think we should consider engaging in, against China. For one, uh, legislation that Senator Brown and I are working on called the Fighting Trade Cheats Act. This is going to give us an opportunity for U.S. industry to strengthen our, or actually to go after bad actors. Right now, China has a, has a, a, a play that they, they run. They're dumping materials in the United States after they launder it from the time that it leaves Ch Taiwan to the time that it gets here. CIS does not have the capacity to go after all of these cheat schemes. But if we unleash American industry to go after these tax cheats, we get a force multiplier on what I think are unfair trade practices. Um, and Mr. Chair, the other thing I wanted to mention, I'm going to be brief because I want to get to the vote, but I want to thank uh, Senator Menendez for inviting me to co-chair the Taiwan uh, Caucus. I think that we have an opportunity to work together, and I want to do everything we can to strengthen our relationship and have and start playing at the level China's been playing for decades. This is, a, this is one of several steps we should take, and I look forward to working with this committee under your leadership to get it done. Thank, thank you for your bipartisanship on both of those efforts. I think the Taiwan Caucus with the Chairman Menendez is going to be very constructive in this area, and also I appreciate your leadership with Senator Brown on the trade cheats effort. So we'll be working closely together. Uh, on those issues. Next, in the order of appearance, uh, we would have Senator Cortez Masto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to thank you, the ranking uh, member, for working on this important legislation to your staff, as well as the staff of the JCT. Thank you so much for all of the incredible work uh, reducing double taxation uh, on cross-border investment between the United States, as you've heard 
uh, between the United States and Taiwan. It, it's critical for our economy uh, and our national security. I am proud to say that Nevada um, has a sister state relationship with Taiwan that has existed since 1985, and the goal between uh, Nevada and uh, Taiwan is to continue to enhance our trade, education, and cultural um, uh, relations as well. Uh, and we also know it's in, it, essential, this partnership, uh, to confronting the aggression of the Chinese Communist Party. Earlier this year, I was proud to, to co-sponsor Senator Van Hollen's resolution that recognizes the value of a tax treaty with Taiwan. Uh, and uh, thank you to everyone uh, for continuing to move forward in this important legislation. I also have to thank uh, my, my colleague, uh, Senator Blackburn, uh, to, uh, who joined me with uh, an amendment uh, that, thank you to the chair and ranking member, uh, is now part of this legislation. Uh, the amendment reduces double taxation on income earned by those in the entertainment industry. Uh, in general, this will help support cultural connections between Taiwan and the U.S. and support our economy in Las Vegas, but also uh, across the country. I also want to make clear that what we are doing today strengthens the economy of both the United States and Taiwan. Unfortunately, <clears throat> excuse me, unfortunately, the Commun uh, Chinese Communist Party uh, is amplifying a false narrative to try to undermine the U.S.-Taiwan uh, relations. And I want to be clear that this could not be further from the truth. This bill and other actions we have taken to support chip manufacturing in the U.S and grant uh, foreign military financing to Taiwan will strengthen the economy and national security of both the U.S. and Taiwan. So again, I appreciate bipartisan cooperation on this issue and look forward to continuing to work with the committee. Thank I, you. I, I thank my, my, my colleague and uh, Senator Cortez Masto and, and Senator Blackburn have done very good work on the entertainment amendment. It is in the modified mark, and I thank you both for, uh, for your leadership. Next uh, in order of appearance would be Senator Daines. Chairman Wyman, thank you. I'm very glad to see this committee moving forward in recognizing the importance of the U.S.-Taiwan relationship. Before I came to Capitol Hill, I spent many years in the Pacific Rim doing business, including Taiwan. And this partnership between our countries is crucial for a robust economic and strategic partnership, one that I've proudly supported throughout my time in the U.S. Senate. And I think this bill also sends a strong message of American support for Taiwan alleviating the burden of double taxation for businesses, providing certainty in U.S.-Taiwanese cross-border investment, and reducing complexity for dual citizens. And reinforcing our trade partnership with Taiwan will increase opportunities across both countries and encourages investment for shared prosperity. When you think about the fact that 95% of the world's population is outside the United States, trade is a critical part of our economy in Montana and for our long-term economic growth. As such, it's important to ensure that Taiwan is a key long-term partner to the United States and to Montana by helping to expand new economic opportunities and creating jobs and supporting our ag economy in my state. This agreement helps Taiwanese and American workers, farmers, and small businesses and continues a responsible diversification of Asia-Pacific trade partners. This legislation we're looking at today shares bicameral, bipartisan support, and more importantly, shows our strong support for Taiwan and its unique tax status. Additionally, this bill will further cement America's commitment to supporting Taiwan in the face of China's increased aggression. I look forward to getting this bill across the finish line giving both U.S. and Taiwanese citizens and businesses the certainty they need. And again, to Chairman Crapo, Ranking Member, rank member Crapo, <laughs> Chairman Wyden. Story of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Mine too. We think you're both doing a great job, by Thank the way. You. So th thanks for your support and this pulling this together. Thank you, thanks. Senator Danes of Montana. Okay. Uh, Senator Hassan, I believe, is next in order of appearance. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Chair and Ranking Member uh, Crapo for convening this important meeting. Thank you to the staff of both Finance and JCT as well. Today, we consider bipartisan tax legislation that will strengthen the economic partnership between the United States and Taiwan. 
Taiwan is an important regional partner, and collaboration between American and Taiwanese companies is critical to securing semiconductor supply chains. This bipartisan legislation will lower taxes for Americans doing business in Taiwan, encourage more cross-border investments between the United States and Taiwan, and boost U.S. industries that manufacture and use semiconductors. Furthermore, the approach this committee has taken is consistent with U.S. foreign policy, stands up to the Chinese Communist Party, and is in line with Congress's intent to boost semiconductor manufacturing when we passed the Chips and Science Act last year, legislation that I was proud to help craft and which will benefit businesses across New Hampshire and the U.S. by increasing semiconductor manufacturing here at home, strengthening American supply chains, and supporting research and workforce training programs. Thank you to our panel for your work and valuable expertise. Uh, thank you again to the chair and ranking member, and I yield back to the Thank you, Senator Hassan. Senator Young is next. Thank you, Chairman, uh, Ranking Member, for holding today's important markup. Our relationship with Taiwan is, of course, of an important national security and economic uh, security uh, implications for all of our people. Unfortunately, currently, U.S. and Taiwanese businesses are double taxed, and uh, the purpose of, of the act we're considering here today is to provide relief to those businesses so that uh, they're... Uh, able to uh, continue to employ many Americans and uh, so that we can attract investment into our respective countries. As we partner with our allies, including Taiwan, uh, we continue to work to counter China's efforts to dominate the 21st century global economy, and we need to evaluate uh, how uh, and where our policies are undermining U.S. competitiveness and find better solutions that will propel our economy forward. This includes policies that will allow for greater economic cooperation and investment with our foreign partners, including Taiwan, but also it includes domestic policies that <clears throat> prioritize investment in the United States workforce. Policies like, for example, R&D expensing, which incentivize U.S. companies to reinvest in innovative technologies critical to our national competitiveness and which supply American workers with greater opportunity. Unfortunately, I might add, the expiration of Section 174 has left many small businesses facing challenging decisions about the future of their company. Some of these employers <clears throat> are now able to make payroll, unable to make payroll, rather, and are looking at closing their doors as a result of this body's failure to act, at least so far. We're talking about people losing their jobs because businesses are no longer able to expense their R&D costs. I, I'm really encouraged that the committee is taking this step to ensure that our tax structure reflects the strength of our relationship with Taiwan, and I encourage my colleagues to similarly take action on critical tax provisions like Section 174 R&D expensing to ensure that we continue to support the U.S. workforce and further incentivize innovation here in the U.S. I look forward to continuing to work with members of this committee to address these issues this year. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. I, Chairman, could, could I be recognized for 30 seconds? I just want to say a kind word uh, for uh, uh, Senator Young for the good work that he and Senator Schumer and others of our colleagues, Mike Rounds and Martin Heinrich, did in putting together yesterday's seminar uh, on uh, AI. Uh, and uh, the good work, and uh, we're grateful to, to you and your staff. Thank you. We're, we're in such a hurry. I'm going to keep this really brief. We saw the census figures um, just recently. Five million children in poverty. We very much need to address both of these issues. Research and development issues incredibly uh, important to American competitiveness. I'm all in on that. We also got to stand up for our kids. We can't really get Let's into Let's do it, it, Chairman. We can't really get it done today, but we're going to continue. Uh, to get, get through uh, our members' opening statements. We're pleased to have the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and I've been pleased to be working with him. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as chair of the Foreign Relations Committee and co-chair of the Taiwan Caucus uh, with Senator Tillis, uh, I'm committed to strengthening economic bonds between the United States and Taiwan, and I appreciate that the chairman and the ranking member share this commitment. As such, I intend to vote in favor of the bill today, even though I have deep concerns that this legislation alone is insufficient. While a treaty with Taiwan is not possible given its status, 
We can and should insist that the U.S. and Taiwan conclude a binding tax agreement and that Congress approve it. The Taiwanese want an agreement because it bolsters their legitimacy and because the absence of one will hamper their ability to conclude agreements with other nations. Our businesses rely on agreements for certainty and dispute resolution that are unattainable through changes to domestic tax law alone. And as senators, we should insist on congressional approval rather than delegating more authority to the executive branch. In July, the Foreign Relations Committee reported out the Taiwan tax agreement with overwhelming bipartisan support, including from several members who also sit on this committee. That bill authorizes conclusion of a tax agreement with Taiwan and establishes a congressional approval mechanism. It creates the framework needed to advance our relationship with Taiwan, provides legal certainty to industry, and protects congressional prerogative. Now, I believe, as we have discussed, that we can find a compromise to move both bills forward jointly, but it will require the chairman and ranking member uh, to demonstrate some flexibility in their approach, as Senator Rich and I have said we are willing to have flexibility in our approach as well. So I hope, Mr. Chairman, I can ask for your commitment to continue to work with us towards a compromise that allows for speedy enactment of both bills. Uh, and I think that would be uh, a, a great result. Well, Senator Menendez, Chair Mr. Chairman, you have my commitment. And as you and I have talked about, the intersection today of foreign policy and global economics, particularly to get high skill, high wage jobs, means our committees have to work closely together. And I look forward to doing that with you. Senator Carper is next. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my, uh, uh, I, th I think a couple of our colleagues have already mentioned that their states have sister states uh, relationships with uh, Taiwan. And uh, as it turns out, uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, September 12th, uh, was the 23rd anniversary of the sister state relationship that was established between our state, Delaware, and, uh, and Taiwan. I'm uh, pleased that the Finance Committee is convening today uh, meeting uh, today to uh, consider the United States Taiwan Expedited uh, Double Tax Relief Act. And I thank our chairman, I thank our ranking member uh, for working in a bipartisan collaborative manner to advance this important legislation. The bill that we're considering today will strengthen the special and vital relationship between the United States and Taiwan uh, at a time when we have, I think, an opportunity and an obligation to deepen our ties with Taiwan. At the same time, this legislation will provide certainty and predictability for businesses and taxpayers operating in the U.S. and Taiwan. That's something that uh, we call a win-win where I come from. One of my top, top priorities throughout my time in public service has been creating a nurturing environment for job creation and job preservation. And uh, this bill that we're considering today will get us closer to that goal by minimizing double taxation and by facilitating investments both here and at home uh, and, and as well as in Taiwan. And uh, I, I, Joe Biden likes to say all politics is personal, all diplomacy is personal. Uh, I actually used to live in Taiwan and I was stationed during the Vietnam War. They pulled on all the, uh, a lot of Navy planes out of Vietnam in 68 and we flew a lot of our missions out of Thailand. We flew a lot of missions out of Taiwan as well and I have a personal affection for the people of that country, and, and I'm delighted that, uh, that we're taking this, preparing to take this step today. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Carper. Next, in order of appearance, is Senator Langford. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, thank you to all of the leadership here in this committee so we can actually move a pretty common sense uh, piece of legislation just in this tax relationship between businesses in Taiwan and the United States. It should be make common sense that we're not going to have double taxation uh, for Taiwanese companies here or American companies there. Uh, this works to be able to get to that point. It is the first step. Uh, Taiwan obviously has to be able to reciprocate this uh, to be able to finalize this relationship, uh, but it's incredibly important for American businesses here and for Taiwanese businesses as well that we want to have that economic activity. I do have uh, a piece of legislation that I actually introduced this week dealing with Taiwan that's similar in some ways to uh, Senator Cornyn's uh, amendment that he is actually filing today, that I understand he's filing and withdrawing in, in the time today. But this act is called the Deter Act. Uh, we took away the uh, permanent uh, trade relations, the most favored uh, nation status from Russia when they invaded Ukraine and began slaughtering their neighbors. This committee acted on that and spoke in a very clear way to Russia that we're not going to do economic activity with you. I encourage us to be able to take that step in the days ahead with the Deter Act that I'm filing to be able to make it clear to China in advance. 
rather than waiting till an invasion occurs, but to let them know in advance that if they invade Taiwan and take military action on Taiwan, that we will have the exact same response we did for Russia, because it is much better to try to deter a war from ever starting than to try to end it once it actually begins. This would also send a clear signal to every American business that if you have relationships with the leadership of China and you want to continue to do business there, that you need to be able to engage with Chinese leaders to be able to encourage them to not take military action and to prepare American businesses uh, to say, if your entire supply chain is tied up in China and you invade Taiwan, you're about to lose your supply chain. So you need to make preparations, especially in areas like pharmaceuticals and others where we're ex exceptionally vulnerable at this point. So this deter act, I won't be filing today, but it is directly connected to what we're talking about currently with Taiwan and that we should make a, an advanced statement proactively with China to say we will not have economic activity with you if you invade the peaceful people of Taiwan. So thanks for the engagement on this today. Thank, thank you, Senator Langford, and I'll look forward to hearing more about, uh, about your proposal. Senator Blackburn is next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank you and the staff, everyone, for the work on this. It's such an appropriate follow-on step to the U.S.-Taiwan Initiative on 21st Century Trade, which I think we all supported. It passed the Senate unanimously. So uh, this is an appropriate step. It is important to Taiwan as they seek to fight back against the aggression from China. I appreciate Senator Langford's remarks. This is important to them. It's important to a lot of our manufacturers in Tennessee who are using so many chips and want the stability and the consistency and want to avoid these double taxation schemes. I appreciate Senator Cortez Masto working with me. It is so important that we protect our creators and our innovators in the entertainment space. And of course, in Nashville, we've got some of the world's best singers and songwriters. So we are pleased that the protections they have in other tax treaties to avoid that double taxation are recognized in this. And I look forward to voting yes. I thank my colleague, and I appreciate her good work uh, uh, with the senator from Nevada. Okay, next will be uh, Senator Whitehouse, I believe. Senator Casey, um, did you want to make any remarks? I'll submit a statement for the record in the interest of time. Very good. Good work on this. You're a kind soul. Senator Whitehouse. Mr. Chairman, I'm pleased to support this legislation as a way to strengthen the economic partnership between the U.S. and Taiwan. One benefit that traditional tax treaties offer for both parties to the treaty is being able to exchange relevant tax information between the two tax authorities with the appropriate confidentiality protections. That exchange of information is both helpful to honest taxpayers and allows the respective tax authorities to police tax evasion and other forms of crime. The Treasury Department can enter into tax information exchange agreements independently from tax treaties. I filed an amendment with Senator Warren to require the Treasury Secretary to update Congress on its efforts to enter into such an agreement if it wasn't reached in a timely manner. I look forward to hearing from the Treasury witness today on Treasury's plans to negotiate this important agreement that will benefit both the U.S. and Taiwan and strengthen our economic partnership. And I thank the Chairman for his <coughs> help in facilitating this. I, th I thank uh, my colleague. I'm very interested in the idea that he's pursuing with Senator Warren. I think we're going to have some uh, discussion on that. Uh, next, uh, in order of appearance would be Senator Warner, then we'll have Senator Stabenow uh, wrap up uh, uh, the opening statement. Sen Senator Warner, I know you're juggling a lot today. Please uh, proceed if you choose. Mr. Chairman, in an effort to make sure that we move expeditiously to a vote, I yield back all of my time. And I just, I just ask for future extra two minutes Bank. at another time. <laughs> <laughs> Always clever. Senator Stabenow. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will be brief as well, uh, but just thank you it, to both you and our ranking members. This is really important bipartisan legislation, and it's going to unlock new investments in the United States, particularly around onshoring semiconductor chip production. So it's jobs, it's securing the supply chain, and I'm really pleased that we're doing this today. Thank you. I, I, I thank all my colleagues, and we're 
We're getting ready to move to a vote. Let me introduce our panel. Uh, Jonathan Goldman from the Senate Finance Committee Majority, Randy Herndon from the Senate Finance Minority. We have Tom Barthold, Chief of Staff of the Joint Committee on Taxation, who has been doing wonderful public service work for a long, long time. And we also have Michael Plowgen, Deputy Assistant Director for International Tax Affairs at the Department of Treasury. Members have received the modification to the mark. Mr. Barthold, could you please briefly describe changes made for the modified mark? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The members of the committee have before them two joint committee documents, JCX 37 and 38, which describe the underlying mark and the chairman's modification. The underlying mark provides benefits to qualified residents of Taiwan that are comparable to benefits outlined in a number of the articles of the U.S. Model Income Tax Treaty. The modification to the mark provides that in the case of payments, wages paid to entertainers and athletes who are qualified Taiwan residents performing in the United States, that the wages are not subject to our income tax to the extent the wages do not exceed $30,000. This is comparable to Article 16 of the U.S. Model Treaty. It's probably important for the members to note that while this legislation will be effective on the date of enactment, none of the benefits are available until the Secretary of the Treasury determines that U.S. persons otherwise subject to income tax in Taiwan are afforded comparable benefits to the benefits provided in the chairman's mark as modified. That uh, concludes my brief description. Be happy to answer any questions that the members might have. Very good. Do any senators have questions for Mr. Barthold? Seeing none. If I may. This is not for Mr. Barthold, though. This is for Mr. Plowgen. Please per go ahead, Senator Whitehouse. Um, Mr. Plowgen, is, is Treasury currently negotiating a tax information exchange agreement with Taiwan? If so, when will such an agreement be reached? Uh, yes, we are uh, negotiating a tax information exchange agreement with Taiwan. Um, because the agreement uh, depends on both sides, I cannot guarantee uh, when that will be finalized. But uh, TIAs are not long agreements. Uh, they, they typically are not controversial. Uh, and they typically take about a year uh, to negotiate. Now, here we have a, some complications because the agreement has to be between the American Institute in Taiwan and the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office, or TECRO, uh, while the operative provisions have to be uh, executed by the IRS, so that has required some customization. But, but again, typically they take about a year to negotiate. Well, thank you. I urge you to prioritize reaching such an agreement expeditiously. Uh, it will benefit both the U.S. and Taiwan and strengthen our economic partnership. And again, I thank the chair for his facilitation of all of let, this. Let me make clear, I fully agree with Senator Whitehouse on this information exchange agreement. It's an important part of the process. Mr. Plowgen, as you negotiate an information exchange agreement with Taiwan, can you commit to briefing this committee on your progress? Yes, we'd be pleased to brief Very the Very good. On our Thank progress. you. I think uh, uh, Senator Tillis had a question. No, I was just You were just... <laughs> well... <laughs> Thank you for saving my time. <laughs> Quorum for the purpose of conducting business under Committee Rule 4 is present. That being the case, the modification is hereby incorporated in the Chairman's mark, and the Chairman's mark is modified as open to amendment. We'll go back and forth. Republican and Democrat will start with a Republican amendment. Does any senator wish to offer an amendment? All right. Don't do Very good. We can then report uh, the bill. Let me know if you have I move that the chairman's mark is modified and amended be reported favorably. Is there a second? Second. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Stabenow. Aye. Ms. Stabenow, aye. Ms. Cantwell. Aye by proxy. Ms. Cantwell, aye by proxy. Mr. Menendez. Aye by proxy. Mr. Menendez, aye by proxy. Mr. Carper. Aye. Mr. Carper, aye. Mr. Cardin. Aye. Mr. Cardin, aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Mr. Brown, aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye by proxy. Mr. Bennett, aye by proxy. Mr. Casey. Aye. Mr. Casey, aye. Mr. Warner, aye. Mr. Warner, aye. Mr. Whitehouse, aye. Mr. Whitehouse, aye. Mr. Ha Ms. Hassan, aye. Ms. Hassan, aye. Ms. Cortez Masto, aye. Ms. Cortez Masto, aye. Ms. Warren, aye. By proxy. Ms. Warren, aye. By proxy. Mr. Crapo, aye. Mr. Crapo, aye. Mr. Grassley, aye. Mr. Grassley, aye. Mr. Cornyn, aye. By proxy. Mr. Cornyn, aye. By proxy. Mr. Thune, aye. By proxy. Mr. Thune, aye. By proxy. Mr. Scott, aye. By proxy. Mr. Scott, aye. By proxy. Mr. Cassidy, aye. By proxy. Mr. Cassidy, aye. By proxy. Mr. Langford. Aye by proxy. Mr. Langford, aye by proxy. Mr. Danes. Aye. Mr. Danes, aye. Mr. Young. Aye by proxy. Mr. Young, aye by proxy. Mr. Barrasso. Aye. Mr. Barrasso, aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. Mr. Johnson, aye. Mr. Tillis. Aye. 
Mr. Tillis, aye. Mrs. Blackburn. Aye by proxy. Mrs. Blackburn, aye by proxy. Mr. Chairman. Uh, aye. Um, the clerk will report. Mr. Chairman, the final tally is 27 ayes, zero nays. The bill is reported favorably. I ask unanimous consent that the staff have the customary authority to make appropriate technical, conforming, and budgetary changes. Without objection, I want to thank all members on both sides of, uh, of the dais for a very important markup. And with that, uh, the Finance Committee is adjourned. <laughs>